Thanks, Ramon, and uh, thanks to everybody for coming, and uh, thanks, Mike, for the uh, tag team. Uh, Mike and I get to do this at another meeting later this year. It's going to be kind of entertaining. Um, so, welcome to Raleigh. Welcome to the fifth uh, Earthscope National Meeting. And I want to say thanks, first off, to the organizing committee, to the national office staff, and to the IRIS staff for a great program and the great logistics that have gone to get us all here. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks to all of you for coming to what is going to be an especially important Earthscope National Meeting. They're, they're all important, but this one is especially so. And perhaps I should explain a bit why uh, I have that perspective on things. We're in the midst of some big transitions at the moment, and there are some big issues to be discussed, both things that are short-term, uh, relatively short-term, and things that are relatively long-term. Over the next few days, some of the short-term things that we're going to talk about, what is the future of the safe-odd down, safe downhole component? So there's going to be lots of sessions about safe-odd science, lots of sessions about its importance in the broad scheme of Earthscope. We need to have a conversation about that. Some of you are going to be having conversations with each other about plans for the next round of Earthscope proposals. Um, and you may wish to hear some news about the Earthscope solicitation, which I'll tell you in a few minutes. Um, so I'm sure that's going to be lots of healthy discussion. There's, right after I finish talking, going to be the initial discussion about plans for the amphibious array that's currently off the coast of uh, the Pacific Northwest and what happens next. And then over the longer term, there's going to be discussion about the phrase that we've all been using, the next big thing. But I'm going to want to encourage you guys from the beginning to think of this as the next big things with an S on the end. Because there isn't necessarily just one. And I also want to emphasize that they're not all necessarily big on different scales. There's lots of different numbers that mean big. Think about there may be several medium things that are worth doing. Um, they're not all necessarily really humongous things. So that's used to, useful to think about. So start off with some info about the budget. Uh, the FY13 budget for NSF, the appropriation has been passed. You all have seen this. It's a passed. It's signed in. Everything's there. Right now, if uh, the numbers are ending up where they, they look like they are, it's about a 2.5% cut for fiscal 13 relative to fiscal 12. However, I should emphasize that uh, for those several of us in the room that are NSF program officers, the programs, we do not yet know our fiscal 13 numbers. So we don't know how that 2.5% translates down at our level. We're still waiting for that information. It's still being worked on. And I know there's lots of effort going on there, but we don't have that info. I can say I expect a cut, but I can't say exactly how severe. And I just, I just generally don't know. Um, there's lots of planning and lots of stuff going on. Uh, that are contingencies in case of various levels, but that's about as much information as I really have as this, uh, th that I can share with you today. I can tell you the 14 request is out. Uh, for those who haven't seen that one, you can, can go and download it off the web, but the, the bottom line summary number for all of NSF is an 8.4% increase on fiscal 12's final enacted level. That's what's in the request for, uh, that, that went forward to Congress a few weeks back. My own personal take, and, and I really want to emphasize this is just my own personal take. This is not necessarily anybody else's from NSF, is that we're in a period that is, is austere. And it's going to be like that for a little while, is my guess. But NSF overall is viewed generally positively. And so I think you can, you can take those two sorts of things in balance. Where it's going to go, I don't know exactly, but we'll see. So I'll start off uh, with some things that are going on in the facility, and then we'll talk a little bit about the science program, and then we'll talk about some other things that are out there. On the facility side, uh, the first thing that, the first question I've been asked by essentially everybody who has seen me other than what happened to your foot is um, what's happening with the facility. Uh, I can tell you about SAGE and GAGE, uh, and I can tell you this. The review process is complete all the way through going to the National Science Board. The National Science Board has authorized NSF to make an award at the discretion of the acting director. And negotiations are underway, and that is about as much as I can tell you. This isn't really, really public information. The reason you need to know this is because it's going to influence the discussions that you have over the next three days. And that's why we're, we're telling you this information now. But that's the news. The next thing on the facility is SAFOD. And this is a big issue for this meeting. Um, I want to thank Heather for a very nice talk uh, on this one, and Mike for some comments that helped set the stage as well. 
I want to emphasize two parts. Uh, the Safard core, uh, the, the core material that was picked up as a, you know, collected as part of the work of doing Safard, that's going very well. There are lots of publications coming out. Over 500 samples are out to over two dozen groups around the world and lots of good results are coming. The next core release window, for those of you who are interested in putting in a request, opens July 1st, although you can go to the website now to begin the registration process and get yourself set up to go. Uh, Wade Johnson, who is sitting back there, is the person to talk to at the meeting about the specifics about how that will work on the mechanics of the website and this kind of thing, and Wade can certainly give you all the info you need there. The window opens July 1st, it will close on August 1st, and the uh, intent is that all PIs will be notified of the disposition of each of their requests by the 30th of September, so the end of this fiscal year. So that's the, that's the core side of things. The downhole side of things uh, is, as of October 1st, we we're, we're, don't have a safe hard management entity formally. We have had a solicitation out that uh, didn't get, didn't get much response, and let's leave it at that. I need to know from you in the community what you view as the importance of the SAFOD downhole component as the broad picture of Earthscope is concerned. So come and talk to me about that. Come to the sessions that are about this. Make your voice heard. We need to hear this at NSF in order to be able to help make the right decisions on our end in our communications and conversations with the community as this process goes forward. So please, make your voices heard. Now switching over to the science program, uh, last round's proposals, the process is nearly complete and the reason it's not completely complete is because we don't yet have our fiscal 13 budget. Almost everybody has been notified. There are still a few people that are in the gray zone. Please come and talk to either me or to Chuck Esterbrook, who is my co-program officer, especially for the science side of things. Come and talk to us. We will talk to you happily in private about where things stand. Unfortunately, because of the fact that we don't have our 13 numbers yet, there are a few folks that are sitting in that gray zone. And I know that's not a comfortable place to be, and I'm sorry that, that that's where you are, but that's where things stand. Coming up for this year, Chuck and I have revised the solicitation. This hasn't been a big revision, but there's one change you all need to know about. The deadline is now August 23rd, no longer July 16th. As of this year, it's August 23rd. And the intention is that it will stay there until some future point where we may or may not have to make another change. Um, that basically better matches the budget cycle, and there's a few other things that are, that are reasons behind that, but deadline now, August 23rd. The other big point to note is we are not accepting proposals for work that involves the SAFOD main hole. Core is a different thing. SAFOD main hole, we're not accepting proposals this round. Otherwise, all the other changes are little wordsmithing things and, and this sort of stuff. Uh, I want to emphasize one thing that came out of last round. Um, we got lots of questions. There's language in the solicitation that there's a $300,000 threshold. If you are putting in a proposal with an annual project budget of $300,000 a year or more, please call us. This is not a cap. It's not total for the life of the project. It's $300,000 per year. It's a threshold that triggers conversation. We would like you to call us so that we can be aware of what you're thinking about and, and have that information coming down. We can give you a bit of guidance about where that might fit into the scope of the program's resources, this sort of thing. It's really just a conversation point. It isn't a cap. And something Basil was talking about this morning triggered a thought that I wanted to emphasize for everybody. There is space inside the program for discovery-based science. Science proposals that come into Earthscope do not have to explore a specific, really detailed hypothesis. We have this hypothesis, and it's either this way or this way, and we're going to test it in the following fashion. That's a fine proposal in the program. It's, it's, an, it's a great proposal for the program to get, but we also have space in the program for this is an area that's unexplored that we think with the following techniques, we could learn something fundamental and then go and do discovery. And that's that there's plenty of room in the program for that as well. We do do both, and we have had awards for both, and we've had proposals for both. So I wanted to make sure everybody remembers that as you go forward. So the other thing I want to do on the science side is encourage you uh, to think about the other areas at NSF that you can grab to get opportunities. There are funding opportunities out there that are not Euroscope core. They're not even what you would think of as the core programs in EAR. Uh, and the EAR, PIs seem to be somewhat underrepresented in these sorts of opportunities. So I'm going to encourage you to go, uh, go to the websites, find these, go and think about projects that could fit. 
Um, some of those include the INSPIRE program, uh, the SAVVY, Science Across Virtual Institutes. These are for sorts of big projects that, especially INSPIRE, are meant to be multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary ideas that maybe don't really have necessarily a single home in the foundation, but that you could come here and get requests for that. There's a number of uh, programs under the C's umbrella. Um, i -Corps is an area, if you are thinking about, in a, uh, thinking particularly about becoming an entrepreneur, I would encourage you to contact Rafael Montelli and EAR to talk about i -Corps because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. These things, as I say, EAR program, uh, sorry, EAR PIs, typically we, we have found have been a little bit underrepresented, so we really want to encourage you guys to go for those. There's, there's some places out there where you have opportunity to go. And then some of the more classic things, uh, deadlines that are, that are coming up, I would like to remind everybody who's thinking about uh, trying for a postdoc fellowship, that July 18th is the deadline for that, for EAR postdoc fellowships. If you are thinking about a career proposal, and Chuck and I have been struck by the fact that we have relatively few career proposals in the program. Um, the career deadline this year is July 24th. And then finally, if you're thinking about an REU, that's August 28th. So think about these deadlines coming up. And again, the Earthscope deadline for Earthscope Science this year, 23rd of August. Now the next big thing, or things, which is what I want to encourage you to think about. Earthscope was always designed as a 15-year lifespan program at NSF. Here we are in year 10, and people are thinking about what happened. So what happens next? And one of the things I'd, I'd really like to encourage you to think about, there are lots of ideas out there that, that I've had people come and talk to me about, that I know others uh, in the room from NSF have had folks come and talk to them about, which are a variety of scales. And you should be thinking in terms of things that are both medium and large. Don't just limit yourself to thinking about something that might be another MREFC project, because keep in mind, an MREFC project is $140 million minimum in GEO these days. You have to have a big project for that. But there's a lot of science that, that may not be that big, but still has one heck of an impact if you can get it going. Medium things, the next medium thing, whatever you want to think about that is. Uh, lots of communities have these ideas. It's not just the Earthscope community, or even the fact that the Earthscope community is made up of a bunch of people from other communities, and they all interact and overlap with each other. But keep in mind that folks in geochemistry, folks in hydrology, folks in geomorphology, folks in sedimentary geology and paleobiology are thinking about their things that they find interesting, because this is just a conversation that happens all the time. So think about the things that are lots of ideas out there that can benefit a huge range of your sciences. Think about that, and they don't really have to be huge, but they could be medium, they could be multiple, they could add up to a big impact. So think about those ideas, and try not to get into, there, there's a, a sort of an us versus them mentality of, a, there's a risk of that happening. Think of, don't just think about yourselves as Earthscope community members, but think of yourselves as Earth scientists. And what are the Earth sciences gonna benefit from all of these different ideas that you bring forward? So there's lots of good stuff that's gonna happen in the next few days. Please make sure that you are active and involved in talking. I know I don't really have to say that because this is not exactly the most quiet group in the world, but <laughs> be active, be involved, come forward with your ideas, make sure that you, you make them heard. And uh, we're here mostly to listen, also to have a little bit of chatting, and uh, I'll be around, and I know Chuck is here, and Jennifer Wade is here, and Jim is here, and I think Shen Kong Shen is coming, if he's not already here, so there's several of us from NSF in the room. Please come and, please come and find us. Thanks very much. Thank you.